It is the Riot Podcast, episode something, for Tuesday, October 24th, the only podcast that thanks you for listening at the beginning of each episode now. Right? Is that a new thing? Thank uh, you. Yeah, I think, and there's no other podcast that would do this, right? I would say so. I think it's a pretty unique thing, but we appreciate you. Uh, give us a lots of stars and reviews and things of that nature. Good podcast today, right? We've got... Uh, we got a debate about pillows near the end. Uh, stick around for that. How stained is too stained? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Also, what you hear near the beginning is um, a useless knowledge that is uh, very... Out- a lot of times we don't record or include the useless knowledge in the podcast. This one is a very unique useless knowledge. Uh, I hope it's not going to upset anybody too much. I hope we, we took the right direction with it we try to use it to be hopeful and aspirational our useless knowledge today it might be a little sad i'll say it a little sad but we try to channel the sadness into something good right right yeah all right good podcast anything you like to add lots of good stuff today and we'll catch you next time see you guys you won't hear a show like this anywhere else And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. Today is a pretty sad. This is going to be the most, the saddest useless knowledge we've done yet. Oh, no. It's a sad one. Why? Because I'm going to talk about all the facts you don't want to know about dog euthanization. Why? Why? You're not doing this for real, are you? Today's National Pit Bull Awareness Day. (laughs) Sadly, because of this, pit bulls are now the most euthanized dog breed mm. in the United States. And I even took the step. I, I was going to, you know what I was going to do? What were you going to do? I was going to get rid of the rapid fire music. Yeah. And I was going to replace it uh-huh. with the Sarah McLaughlin. Yeah. But I knew it was too early. I could just sing that. It was going to be too early for the arms of the angels. Yeah. Everybody driving to work. Mm-hmm. Three minutes of that just screaming mm-hmm. would not be a good combo. Yeah, but this is supposed to be a happy show. I know, I know. <laughs> but you know what? It's National Pit Bull Awareness Day. Mm-hmm. Let's get the facts straight. I'm All here right. to set, set the word straight. Yeah. Um, pit Bull is most, use, most euthanized dog breed, right? Yeah, that's unfortunate. I mean, it has to be one kind of dog, though. It does. You know what the question of the day is? Uh-huh. What dog comes in second place? Oh. <laughs> See, but, but this is important. This. I don't I know you don't want to guess it, but you have to. All right? Yeah. It's your job. Let the people know. Has almost as many listed on Petfinder's website Mm -hmm. for adoption as well as euthanization as pit bulls. And this is a shocking, shocking It's shocking, huh? Uh Uh-huh. It's a a purebred dog. It's a dog breed. Okay. Um, See. Should I guess it right now? Yeah. 8772 Radio U, your useless knowledge guess. This is also supposed to be useless knowledge, and this feels kind of useful since it, it, we're like is, raising actually, awareness. For today it. is all this is useful knowledge all today. Right. All right, but you still don't win anything. You don't win a darn thing. 8772 Radio U, if you know the second most, I hate even repeating this, say the it. second most you say it. euthanized dog breed of them all, and uh, whether you're right or wrong, you get nothing. Nobody does it better. The Riot Radio U. We're in the midst of useless knowledge, although uh, Isaiah has declared it useful today because it's it's in honor of Pitbull Awareness Day. I'll just turn it to Isaiah. Turn it over to Isaiah with today's question. Sadly, it's National Pitbull Awareness Day. The awareness is the pit bulls are the most euthanized dog breed in the United States. Mm -hmm. Also, the dog breed that ends up in shelters the most. So if we can work hard together as people, we can change things and make pit bulls no longer the most euthanized dog breed. And the dog that's in second place, Uh, that would overtake them. Yeah. Has almost as many dogs listed on Pet Finders websites. Mm Mm-hmm. For being in shelters and euthanization, what dog breed is this? We have a flurry of texts, uh-huh. and only a couple have gotten this right thus far. Um, I'm just going to go with what, uh, what makes sense, even though I feel like you've alluded to this not being correct. I feel like 
the other dog that's that's an obvious choice would be Rottweiler. Unfortunately, incorrect. Fortunate for Rottweilers. Ben texted that in as well. Mm -hmm. Some others guessed Rottweiler. The correct answer is the Labrador Retriever. Mm. Which That's, is one of the most adopted dogs. Yeah. So it makes sense. A very sense. popular breed as well. Yes. Because so of just like, by sheer numbers. Yeah, just because of like the breeders and stuff, they don't all make it to a home. Yeah. And so where do they end up? The shelter. That is unfortunate. So now we've got some rapid fire, but today's rapid fire does not sound like our typical rapid fire. Oh. Let's get real sad. There are an estimated 70 million stray animals in America. How many of those stray animals even end up in a shelter? How many million? There's 70 million stray animals just 70, wandering. In, 70? 70 million just um, wandering right now. How many end up in a shelter? Uh, probably like 5 million. No! You were close. No! 6 million. That leaves, what is that, 64 million yep. on shelters? Uh-huh. Just out and abandoned. In a six-year time span, one dog can produce how many puppies? This is why spaying and neutering pets is so important. Oh, six years. Six years, how many puppies can one dog make? Uh, probably like, like eight a year. So probably like, what's eight? Like uh, 48. 48? Yeah, I think they could do 48. What? In six years? 67,000 dogs. What? Oh, I thought it was like, you, I thought it was one dog. What? It's one dog. Yeah, how many puppies can one dog produce? Yeah, because you got to think about, he, they're producing a litter. Uh-huh. That litter can produce a litter. Oh. That dog can produce a litter. Yeah. So it's not just them, it's their puppies as well. Got it. I didn't, I didn't factor that in. You didn't in. factor that in. Yeah, okay. no wonder Bob Barker. So we'll go ahead and just mark that <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Talking about spaying and neutering. Okay. What per <laughs> what percentage of animals are taken to the shelter by their very own owners? What percent? Probably like probably like seventy five, right? A little high there. It was thirty percent. Yeah, a little high. A little high. Uh huh. Final question: One out of how many out of how many dogs that enter the shelter are purebred dogs? Um, one out of every six. <laughs> One of one out of every four, but most wow. are pit bulls yeah. that go that are a purebred dog. That is your sad rapid fire pit bull awareness, dog awareness, shelter awareness, useless knowledge. That is sad, but I think um, it's not fully useless today. This is Radio U's worst of the riot. Last night, the first ticket to the World Series was booked. The Texas Rangers. Stomped on the Houston Astros in Game 7 of the ALCS. So the, the Rangers will be facing the winner of Phillies Diamondbacks in the World Series. How are you feeling about that? you care at all? No. I'm glad the Astros lost, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'm against the Astros just because they're dirty, rotten cheaters. Uh-huh. They're scoundrels. And I don't like when people... I do, do not like when people cheat in sports. I just don't like it. Think of ruins sports when they yeah. do like that. I don't like that. I Can't also, we all just have fun? Uh, sure. I also uh, don't like how the Astros now act like they're all persecuted. Like, they barely got punished for cheating, and the fans are like, the world is out to get us. Like, you won a World Series. Yeah. You've been in, this would have been your third straight World Series yeah. you were in. The world, the MLB is not to get you. Uh, but Bill Hill. Yeah. You know, right. nobody feels bad for you. Yeah. Imagine how much more success you could be having if the MLB wasn't holding you down. Uh, but the Astros, here's what I actually want to do. Because, yeah, who cares about the uh, World Series that much unless you're a Rangers fan? But something happened in baseball that I just think is wild. And it is proof that the MLB is not out to get the Astros. Earlier on in the ALCS, pitcher for the Houston Astros, his name is Brian Abreu. He intentionally threw a pitch at Ranger star outfielder Adolis Garcia, who wound up winning the ALCS MVP. That was earlier on in the, uh, in the series. It was uh, debatable whether it was intentional that he threw it at him or not. But uh, the MLB, uh, and most people thought it was bad enough, that they decided to suspend him. 
So he's supposed to be suspended for two games. He was able to appeal the suspension. That's normal. The MLB, after his appeal, decided to uphold the suspension. So he's still suspended for two games. But not until next season. So he was able to pitch yesterday in the game seven of the ALCS. So what was the point? What's the point of suspending him? This is what I don't understand. This is like if I cheated on my wife and it's like, but she can't be mad at me for four months. She's going to delay being like, what's the point then? What's the point? Makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense. And I was just trying to think of so many analogies of like why you're not really upholding the suspension. If you aren't punishing him now, your dog, if it pees on the carpet, you don't shove his nose in it a week later. It doesn't make any sense to me. I got, even though I don't really care that much about base, the baseball at this point, if the Red Sox were around, I would. Uh, this whole thing got me a little heated because it just makes no sense. Yeah, especially for playoffs on the line versus no playoffs on the line. I think the yeah. best analogy would be like if your kid did something wrong and you're like, you're grounded. But this weekend for the birthday parties, you can go. That's right. But next weekend, you're staying at home when we had no plans. Uh-huh. You're staying at home in your room. That'll teach you. There's no repercussion. He has to sit out games in the middle of the, what, 100-game regular yeah. season? Oh, no. Goodness. He's probably looking forward to the break. Yeah. That's so, wild. That's but wild. you know what this means, too? Mm-hmm. I assume Abreu, right? Yeah. Was he one of the better pitchers for the He's Astros? He's a fairly good reliever. Yeah. MLB, they did this uh-huh. for money. Because they want the best players playing. Yeah. Obviously. That's why they put him out there. That's why they waited well, for the suspension. I showed him. Because I didn't watch. Either oh. way. You had a little uh, little strike of your own, did yeah, you? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I'm not going to watch the first two games of the next season either. No. Yeah. But I, I will watch the World Series Take that up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, hi there. This is worst of the riot. Crank that up. Radio U. There's a debate that's sweeping the internet. I want to know your thoughts on this, Isaiah. You think it's gross to sleep on a pillow that is, like, stained? Um, If you ever pull a pillow out of the case, if you did this at a hotel, you'd get upset, right? That the pillow is, like, it's not white like the day it was bought. It's got, like, yellowing on it. Is that gross? That's a good question. I would lean no. I tend to think no, too. I think if you pulled out my pillow that's underneath my... Pillowcase. Yeah. That you the pillow, wash. The pillowcase is clean. I bet you the pillow doesn't look so great. But it's, but, it's old. It's probably old. I've had my pillows for a long time. I mm-hmm. don't get... I don't routinely get new pillows. No. Not that often. Um, but according to the internet, it's a, it's a big debate because some people are saying... And it seems to be, the debate seems to mostly boil down to men versus women. Where men are saying, sleeping on the yellow pillow is not nasty. It's just a pillow that's, that's seen a lot of love. And it's gotten you through a lot of life. And it's just been a lot of places. It's done a lot. But that doesn't make it gross. Whereas it seems women are more on the side of, you got to replace that thing before it gets nasty like that. Which seems... Slightly hypocritical. You want to know why I think that's? I think that a woman might be, might be more likely to stain a pillow yellow than a man, which well, might seem shocking. Yeah, why, why would you say that? Because I think if a lady lays down before taking her makeup off, that mm. could be a very quick way to stain a pillow. That's true. That's Where true. the most likely way you're going to stain it, if not for makeup, uh-huh. It's going to be just from drool, sweat and drool, sweat and moisture and things like that, which would take a long is, time to make a pillow yellow. I think it would is, take, it would take a while. So if a man's sleeping on a yellow pillow though, then it's grosser because that's sweat and drool stains. That means that it's you really did some damage. Yeah. <laughs> like makeup, that's like an instant, that's an instant yellow pillow, right? And if you don't wash it, that's instant yellow. Sure. Where drool and sweat and grime, that is accumulation over months of non-washing. And that's why men... It's not exactly making a good case. That's why men probably don't wash their pillowcases enough. And ladies wash them right away. You lay down one night, 
with makeup on and you're like, oh, my pillow's yellow. I need to wash it. And it immediately comes out where a guy, he's drooling on, on that thing for four months before he realizes the damage he's done, which is now ir irreversible. It's not coming out. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to see what other people think. Is the yellow pillow nasty or a sign of a good pillow that you just can't get rid of? You can't part with it. You can't part with it because it's too good. It's broken eight, in. Once you get a good pillow, you don't want to let that thing go. No, eight, eight seven seven two radio you Let us know your thoughts on the yellow pillow debate. Wasn't that a great riot clip? While you're here, you should watch more of our videos and subscribe so you don't miss what we do next.